you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, friends, and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Last week I said that we would be dealing with major signs pointing to the coming of the Lord. And, you know, ever since I've known Jack, in fact, Jack, I think the first message I ever heard you give at our church, we didn't even know each other then, but you were well in your ministry, was a message on prophecy. You've always loved prophecy so very, very much. And uh, what would be like the number of verses that you had memorized about prophecy? Do you know? Well, I've got 18,000 verses memorized, and a great majority of them have to do with prophecy. Probably over half of them, yes. Oh, my, oh, my. Well, you know what? The Bible does not want any of us to be ignorant about what's coming, what's happening now and what's coming. The Lord wants to uh, enlighten us, and the Bible tells us exactly what is coming. And we know that uh, Jack has been saying all along, that the Lord is coming back very, very soon. And that seems so wonderful. It really, really does. But the Bible teaches that when he comes back, he's going to stop a great war. We referred to that last week. He's going to stop a great worldwide war. In fact, uh, I guess we could call it World War III. Is that correct, Jack? And one of the major, major countries to enter into this war is Russia. You've always said that. That's the leader of all of the armies of the world that we'll be mentioning today. Now, it's very interesting that 60 years ago, I preached a message entitled The Coming War with Russia According to the Bible. And you're going to hear it today. And lo and behold, just about two months ago, I picked up the Wall Street Journal and it says, World War Three is coming. There you go. Prepare. And then it mentioned four nations that will be in the battle, the greatest in history. And it will end with the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, which is the bloodiest thing in the history of the world. And it's all going to take place at Jerusalem. And that ties in with what we're going to say today. That's why it's so near, as you'll see in a few moments. But imagine, when I saw what the Wall Street Journal said, I said, Rexella, here's the message 60 years ago. That's what you're going to be hearing right now. It is right at the door, the bloodiest thing in history. The Bible says five-sixths of the armies of the world that gather there are going to fall. It's going to take seven months of the Jewish people doing nothing but burying them. Oh, But isn't it wonderful? The Bible talks about the rapture. And he says in Revelation, I will keep you out of, not through, but out of the great tribulation, the great war that shall come upon all the world to destroy them. They're upon the face of the earth. Now, what is the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, to be with the Lord in the air and in heaven. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't mean in heaven. Heaven is a place only for spirits. The only time there will ever be bodies in heaven outside of the one body of Christ is that rapture. Well, you say, my loved one died. You mean the body isn't there? No, you've got them in the ground. They've been there if they died 2,000 years ago in the ground. The Bible says the dead in Christ rise first. Well, how come we talk about them being in heaven at the funerals because 2 Corinthians 5 10 says we never really die we just pass over when we take that last breath to be absent from the body absent is to be present with the Lord 2 Corinthians 5 8 
So your love is already there. Now, he comes after the bodies because, first of all, there's going to be a horrendous war. And he says, I will keep you from the Greek word ek, out of the great travesty, the great war. Yes, you'll come upon all the inhabitants of the world. We're gone in the twinkling of an eye, 11 one hundredths of a second. And for the first time, we're there bodily to save us. And he passes out crowns. We're going to be rewarded for the way we lived on earth, the shepherd's crown for faithful ministers, the soul winner's crown for those who won the people of the Lord, uh, the runner's crown for living the life and running the race faithfully, and sacrificially, and according to the word of God. And then, of course, there is the martyr's crown for those who died for Christ, the crowns. And we get those crowns because we're coming back to earth. Aren't we always going to be with Christ? Yes, but he's not staying there. We're this there for seven years to avoid the greatest war on earth, ending with the horrendous battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. The closing scene, it says there's a river of blood 200 miles long to the horse's bridle. What? That's the length of the Holy Land. And that just follows all the horrendous bombing and atom bombs. And we're going to deal with that in just a few moments from now, but we'll be gone. Praise yeah. the Lord. And then he comes back and he sets peace upon the earth. War finished forever. Oh, it's going to be glorious. And beloved, that hour is here. How do I know that? Because the only two signs that proved it, and I said it last week, and I repeated, had to be Israel back after 2,500 years of being out of the land, persecuted, tried, 16 sages murdering the precious Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Now, when they returned back, and they did, and that's what the celebration is all about, that we're going to be preaching beginning April the 19th, celebrating the return of the nation of Israel, and they're there. And then, of course, 19 years later, they took Jerusalem, Six-Day War. Now, again, we're having trouble with the Palestinians, and they want it back. And they're going to get it back. And God said there are hundreds of signs. We're going to be preaching them for the weeks to come until the 19th of April. And then we start that great message of congratulations to the Jewish people. Seven messages on Judaism. And I'm going to tell you something we Christians and Jews know very little about the Bible. Hmm. I've got a message on the similarities between the two religions. They are the same. What? Yeah, we fight one another. Even the five points of fundamentalism, the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the blood atonement, the bodily resurrection, his return, all in the Old Testament predicted to come and fulfill in the New Testament. Amen. Oh, you're going to be. Right. And you say, how can that be? Well, there are only three members of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Right. And the Holy Spirit wrote the whole Bible using human beings. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The whole Bible, the whole Bible. Every book of the Old Testament was written by a Jew. You can read their names as you go through it. All Jews. And you think that's the end of it. Yeah, but we are in the New Testament. Eleven of the twelve apostles were Jews. What? There's only one human being had anything to do with the Bible. It wasn't a Jew. His name was Luke. And he wrote the book of Luke and Acts. And Acts is about the apostles with whom he worked. Eleven out of twelve of them, Jews. That means out of 66 books, 64 of them are written by Jews. And when you add the book of Acts, 65 to 1. Now, can the Holy Spirit make a mistake? And he tells the Jews, here's one plan of salvation. And to the Christians, here's another. No, he's the Holy Spirit. And it's 
from cover to cover. And that's one of the seven messages we're going to be preaching during that great celebration of uh, the Jews being in their own land again. Yeah. And that's the greatest sign. It means Christ is coming at any moment because the sign of Jerusalem and the sign of taking Jerusalem for the Six-Day War is exactly the two final things that happen when he returns. None of the signs, scores of them ever meant a thing. There had to be these two. We have lived to see these two. And Jesus said, when you see these two, you are the generation that's alive for my return. Ah, you know what you ought to be doing? Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You people, ah, crop seen coming across. Something wrong with your Christianity. I long to see him when you don't get a second dip. Mm. Oh, yes, Jack. Well, you know, he brought out a moment ago that uh, we would um, come forth out of the graves at the rapture and we, we receive a new body. Jack, I just want to add a little, little something here. A 90-year-old lady said to me one time, Rexella, am I going to have this same body in heaven? And I said, no. You're going to have a body that's 33 years old. She said, what do you mean? I said, the Bible says we shall be like Jesus, but we shall see him as he is. Oh, was she happy about that one? <laughs> yeah, I'm years. happy about it too. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> well, everything points to the rapture, and then we come back with the Lord. And this horrible war that we know uh, ends with Armageddon, Jesus comes back to stop that and he's going to bring peace on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We'll be coming back with him. But all the signs that he points to in the Bible, pointing to the return of the Lord, they're all here. And uh, the first thing that Jack wanted to point out to us is that a horrible war would be taking place. And who will be one of the major countries to join in that war? Russia. Russia. I'm going to read a headline here for you. The UK to launch new radar against severe Russian threat. It's a threat. Now, the defense minister, Williamson, said, we are in severe and real threat from Moscow. Can you believe that one? Because the United Kingdom is going to go along with Israel, and uh, they'll be opposed by Russia. Again, U.S. Russia faced deadline for nuclear arsenal reduction. Now, Russia is trying to take over the air, and we have something that we're supposed to not be doing. It limits the United States and Russia to no more than 1,550 nuclear warheads, and also limits deploying and non-deployed intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, but they're not holding to that. We are. But they aren't. So Russia is trying to take over the air, and and Great Britain realizes that, and we do too. We got our eye but on Russia. Russia. When we put all the nations in it, and we've got a chart here that shows how many atom bombs each one has, there never will have been a bloodbath like this in the history of the world. Hundreds of missiles are going to be shot. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes. Well, Russia is going to be one of the big ones to oh, lead this. Yeah this army down yeah. to the Middle East and had well, that battle Let me get right there. into that from this book. Okay? Yes, absolutely. Ezekiel 38 and 39, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, who was Gog, the end time ruler of Russia. It could be Putin, who knows, we're that near the coming of the Lord as far as Bible prophecy is concerned. Then it says, the chief, that's the old word Arash, mm. translated Russia in the Greek and Russia in English. The Arash prince, leader of Meshach and Tobols. Meshach, that's the original name of Moscow. Meshach, Moskoti, Moskoti, Moscow. Tobol, Tobolsk. That is the place where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, was shot down. And in the Bible, it's called two ball, but you have the Russian suffix 
on to it, to Balsk. And we could go on and on. Plus, we're going to show the other nations that join weather. This is not going to be a little thing. Yes, Jack. One of the big nations, they're buddies right now, Russia and China. I'm going to read another headline for you here. CIA chief says, China, as big a threat to U.S. as Russia. They're putting them together and saying they're both a threat. Somebody else is going to join with Russia, North Korea. And here I have also uh, a headline about North Korea. North Korea plans parade of long-range missiles before the Olympics. Well, they have uh, sort of pulled back there because they wanted their athletes to be going uh, to the Olympics, and of course they did. So they're being a little bit calm about this right now. But there's a CNN report that they are planning on really developing even more about the ballistic I missiles. want to break in yes, right Jack. there, Excella. That's Revelation 16, 12. The word of God says the enemy shall come from the north, Russia, and from the east, China, and North Korea. And brother, I'm telling you, this little guy that heads up North Korea is threatening us. He's already putting missiles out there all the time. And that guy may start anything at any time. That's just beginning, though, the many other nations. Oh, yes, Jack. Well, you know, one, that the United States had their, their eye on for a long time. We well know this. Iran. And the Bible makes it clear. Jack will be talking about that in a moment. But this headline, U.S. under no illusions about Iran's malicious intent. We know they're not out there to do something good. The IDF to Lebanon, your country has become one big missile factory for Iran. They are certainly building missiles big time and then going on. We'll stop Iran in Lebanon like we stopped it in Syria. Now, they'd like to do that. And, of course, that was Prime Minister Netanyahu who said that. We're going to stop them. But uh, they're going to join with Russia and march down, aren't well, they, Jack? Read that next oh, first. yes, here's another one. Iran looms over, <laughs> they're really upset, Israel-Syria clash. Oh, my. They're, they're happy when they see Israel in a clash with somebody, Jack. Okay. This Bible calls this war the War of Gog and Magog. And it's the last war of history before Christ comes and sends a peace on the earth. And here is Iran. Where'd you ever get that name? Ezekiel 38, 5. Persia. Persia changed its name to Iran and Iraq in 1932. And we are getting ready because this is the time when these nations are preparing. Yes. Well, who's going to um, say stop? Well, already the United States is, our president is being very strong. He's not going to pull back. And uh, he's going to try and stop some of the things that are happening in Iran. But let me just take a look here at this next headline and read it to you. U.S., U.K. to upgrade ballistic missile guidance system. They say, we better do something. Russia's out there and they're building uh, their weapons and so Iran uh, is also. We've got to do something also and upgrade our ballistic mm. missile guidance system. We better or we're going to be hit. The Pentagon pushes nuclear weapons expansion, modernization. Wow. Whoa. Now, whoa, I wish that uh, the whole world could see what Hold I'm looking off at on right that now. For a minute, all Excella. right. Uh, all these nations, as I said, are all going to be together for that great war. It's also mentioning that Ethiopia, Libya, Tugarma, Turkey, Gomer, Germany, uh, the word Gomer, and then Gomerland, Gomeria, and Ashkenazi's son. And that's the Adolf Hitler Nazi crowd. And they all come, all these nations, it says they're going to come like a multitude from the north, the south, and all these nations to try to destroy Israel, but they're going to lose the God who loves Israel. Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. It says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. You Palestinians call yourself Christians. Start praying for Jerusalem. God says he'll bless you. And all who pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But 
It's going to be a war like the world has ever seen. The greatest armies, millions, marching for the great battle. And Armageddon, as I said, is the closing scene when the blood flows to the bridle of the horses for 200 miles. Who are they? Not the Jews. They are going to be preserved. These are the nations who came from the north and every part of the world. It's their blood. And the beasts and birds are eating the flesh. And the Jews, every man available, bury the bodies of the dead soldiers who fought the Battle of Armageddon. And it took them seven months to get them all buried. I got every verse to prove it. Well, some of the weapons, Jack, that they're going to be using, well, we're developing right now a new global arms race. And I'm reading this. Uh, what really surprised me as to how great powers are modernizing their arsenals. Now, I'm just going to quickly read you some of the countries. Number one who has the warheads, Russia, 7,000. Number two, the United States, we have 6,800. Well, then the UK, you know how many they have? Only 215. And then Pakistan, 140. Also, North Korea has 15 already. China has 270. France, 300. Well, Israel, you better pick up here because they only have 80 warheads. And India, they, they surpass that, 130. But you notice who number one is? Russia, mm -hmm. 7,000 warheads. Well, you know, we better uh, be awakened and know that uh, this battle that Jack has been talking about and the lining up of the nations, it's happening right now, isn't it, Jack? Oh, and you know, we c complain about Trump, but you know the guy that was just there before him? He made a deal with Russia to cut the missiles, and we did it, and they didn't. God forgive him. God forgive him. There are thousands of missiles here when you combine all these nations. Yes. It's the atomic war of history. Never before has it happened. Now listen, does the Bible teach it? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shock you right now. Second Peter 3.10. The day shall come that the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. What is that which makes up the atomic bomb? Look it up. Elements. The elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth shall be burned up let's go back now psalm 97 3 a fire devours before them the armies from the north and east with all these nations isaiah 66 15 the lord will come with fire ezekiel 20 47 the flaming flame shall not be quenched joel 2 verse 3 a fire devours before them verse 20 i saw wonders in heaven blood fire pillars of smoke and then Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his devil. Say, Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And a close to this book, Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees were burned. All green grass was burned. Mm -hmm. All from atomic warfare. Poor Israel. But God preserves Israel in the midst of it all. And they have to go out with all their workmen from the whole nation and bury all the soldiers from all those countries because they have won. God loves the Jew, his chosen people, and loves the Christian. His other group of chosen people, only two groups in the world, Jews and Christians chosen. All the rest of the religions, no! 1,600 cults who deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Lost! God only has two groups that will be saved. His beloved people, the Jews, and the Christians. And the Jews will have seen the light. Romans 11.26, all Israel shall be saved. And you know what the Apostle Paul said, who killed Christians as a Jew and then found Jesus on the Damascus turnpike when he heard the voice that said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Jesus? It's you, you're killing me, Jesus. 
He fell on his knees, repented of his sin, and turned. And you know what he said later? Salvationist of the Jews. He still believed it, and so do I. What? That's right. My Bible teaches that when Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom in Jerusalem, the greatest revival in history is going to take place. 144,000 Jews are going to be converted in a day, and they're going to go to all the world preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The king has come, the king has come, and the father is the king, but he said, I'm a spirit, they can't see me, so I'm sending you, Jesus, as the king of kings and lord of lords, and you know what they're going to set up on that day, and this is going to be the great sermon I'm going to close with for the seventh series that's coming soon, beginning with April 19th. That Jesus is going to set up the Judea Christian eternal new world order. Amen. 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 I got proof from the Bible. You'll see. Get that seventh sermon that's going to be delivered to every human being on the earth. Number seven. All right, Jack, just very, very quickly I want to say, who is going to oppose Russia and this northern army coming against Israel anyway? Well, I'm going to read something to you. You know, Jerusalem's in a hotbed right now. They're really arguing about it. In fact, this headline says, Jordan demands world must protect Arab rights in Jerusalem. Jordan King calls for Palestinian capital in East Jerusalem. He's standing against our president. And Jerusalem will be the capital of the Islamic Caliphate. It will not. Something that happened. I was absolutely amazed at this headline. Well, Trump and Pence were tried in a kind of a false thing over there, hanged in effigy in Bethlehem. The Palestinians, the Palestinian Christians. Authority. Oh, forgive them. Absolutely, Jack. Well, thank the Lord that the United States and all of the European countries are going to stand with Israel. And thank the Lord that our president is taking that stand about Jerusalem. All right. The Bible says Tarshish and all her young lions are going to stand with Jerusalem. Who's Tarshish? They changed their name to Britain years ago. And they were known as the Mistress of the Seas. And of course, Britain at one time had the greatest fleet in history. Tarshish and all her young lions. She's England. All the English-speaking people of the world. That's America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, etc. But in the book of Daniel, it mentions the ten toes, and they represent ten European nations that will go along with America and the lions against Russia and her hordes. What? Yeah. And that is the European Union right now with its flag flying in my parents' country, Belgium. Amen. The ten flags. Jesus is about to come. Jesus is about to come. Are you ready? Have you opened your heart to the Lord? I'm going to ask Jack to say a very quick prayer right now. My time just flies away. And Jack, if you would pray that prayer of accepting Jesus as Savior. And would you pray this prayer with him if you haven't already, Jack? It's simple. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. So do it. Lord Jesus, I call in your name. You died on that cross. You shed that blood to wash away every taint of sin I've ever committed. Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. Come into my heart now. Save me. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, please write to us. I'd love to send you a little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. And I trust that you'll be walking with the Lord every single Amen. day of your life. I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. If God is your co-pilot, whoa, co-pilot, swap seats. Let him be the pilot. <laughs> Amen. We'll look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.